Hi there. So I'm uh, speaking today with uh, Professor Simon Lewis, who we're very excited to have on board with us today. I'm down in Adelaide, which is in the city of Churches, and we have Simon Lewis up in Sydney today. Uh, we're going to be talking to him a little bit about his presentation as a bit of a teaser. But what I was most interested in, and certainly what I've had some questions back from the audience on, was about his role and the impact that he's actually had in, in the Parkinson's community. So without further ado, uh, I would like to bring Simon Lewis into the, the presentation. So here we are. So thank you so much, to Professor Simon Lewis, for joining us today. I think given your background, MR and HSC uh, grant recipient, you're an author, you're an educator, you're an academic, you're a clinician. Where do you see yourself and the biggest impact that you've had in Parkinson's? Uh, look, I think probably uh, since moving to Australia, it's given me that chance to, if you like, fill a few roles. So doing basic research, uh, doing clinics and clinical research, doing a lot of the education stuff, not only for clinicians and allied health, but also for patients and support groups. So I guess um, the simple model I have is if we put the patient at the center of everything I do, uh, then we're pretty much bulletproof and hopefully we'll get, uh, you know, good outcomes for everybody. And looking back over your very successful career, what do you think has been the biggest achievement for yourself in in Parkinson's, in the Parkinson's community? Um, look, I think probably the fact that we, we haven't fallen over yet. I mean, it's been about, this is my 11th year here in Australia. Um, I think that we have... You know, a very successful research clinic running. There's over a thousand people that have been through helping us and many of those people have been through more than once. And I guess we've been seeing um, uh, a number of, you know, outputs. And I guess for outputs, what happens is you must be attracting the young, brilliant minds that, you know, we have doing PhDs and masters and honours. And so I guess looking at the, you know, the development of people, if you like, has been a another major uh, thing that I've been able to reflect back on and go, well, that's great, you know, to have publications, but what it means is you must have hopefully inspired people to buy into the model, which is put patients at the center of everything we do. And, and the team have a very clear understanding that unless they're doing research, that they can get up in front of a support group and say, look, this is what we've done and this is why we've done it, um, and have some kind of impact that means something to, to those people who are suffering with the disease, then frankly, it doesn't get a Guernsey. Um, and then I guess, the other part of, uh, you know, the, the stuff that I do is, is the stuff that I don't publish a lot on. In fact, not, not a lot is an understatement, but uh, the sort of political wing of my research where, you know, things like the, the community-based nurses um, and trying to get, you know, more outreach, uh, if you like, especially to rural and regional Australia. Uh, and, you know, those models have been tricky. And, of course, we don't tend to publish those models. You just end up going to Canberra or state governments, banging your head against a door and, and hoping that something will open up for you. So I think that's uh, still a work in progress and, you know, hopefully <laughs> we'll, we'll get some plans in the future. And do you think over the 11 years you've seen changes in that, particularly with the, the Parkinson nurses? Yeah, look, I think we're having some victories. I think the fact that people um, now recognise that that's, you know, a, a central part of what management should be, um, and those people, you know, it's funny when you talk to politicians, they all say the same thing, which is, well, this is obvious. Why, you know, we should be doing this. And you go, yes, it is obvious. But the trouble they have is that they can't work out the difference between saving money and spending money. So, mm. you know, they in a three year cycle, which is, well, if we spend this money, we'll never realize the saving because in actual fact, we're talking about reducing people going into a nursing home or staying in there. It's not a very, uh, a very easy thing for those people to conceptualize. But of course, Overall, everyone agrees, you know, it's kind of, it's, it's, it's frustrating in that sense. Yeah. All right. So let me take it off politics for a moment because we could end up in a bit of a quagmire down there. Um, <laughs> where do you see the, um, the future of Parkinson's? I mean, you cover so many different domains uh, as a neurologist. Yeah. I know you've got a huge role in cognition and, and the cognitive neurosciences. Where do you see the future of Parkinson's for yourself? Oh, look, so, I mean, I guess um, I've come from a background of trying to understand the disease or aspects of the disease. So if you want to get technical, it's like, well, what, what is it that underlies a symptom? So I guess most of the research I've done has been inspired by people coming in saying, I have, and then it might be freezing of gait or it might be hallucinations or cognitive impairment. And then going, okay, well, what is the, the bit of the brain that's going wrong with that? 
not so that we can admire it, so, but so that we can take it in a direction of treatment or improving, you know, outcomes. So I guess one of the obvious things is the idea of the freezing of gait, a very physical symptom, which is much more than just, if you like, walking, um, but being able to understand what happens with that uh, using some clever brain scanning techniques combined with virtual reality, crazy idea at the time, it seemed to work. And then saying, well, can we now do that in real time with EEG, so brainwave recordings? Um, and then saying, okay, well, can we do it in real time with actual recordings from the brain itself during deep brain stimulation surgery? And taking those things forward really with a view to saying, well, okay, if we could then adapt the deep brain stimulation that patients are having in real time because we've just recognized what the signal is, maybe we can change the stimulation in the brain and reduce that symptom. So in actual fact, we sort of need an end point. So it kind of starts a bit removed, but you want something that ends up as a better treatment, better outcome for patients. And I guess that's where I've been busy for 10 years, but really, I guess in the last six to 12 months, uh, there's been a shift. Um, and that shift is in the field of uh, treatments that are aimed at slowing the course of the disease. And that's the talk I'm gonna give on, uh, on the conference. And so the idea, um, 10 years ago, you know, even two years ago, that we would be having trials, um, if you like, pharmacological trials to slow the disease, not something I thought we were ever going to be close to. And now, you know, I, 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 we already have trials running at my center for patients who are just recently diagnosed, haven't started treatment or, you know, only have new onset disease, little treatment. And, you know, if there are patients, you know, wanted to get inter interested in this, especially if you haven't received treatment yet, you know, we, we, we're looking for people. So that side of things. And then the other big part, which I guess is where, you know, uh, your collaboration with Shake It Up comes in and the Link Clinical Trials Initiative, which is to say, well, what about the rest of the patients out there who've already had the disease for some time? And the idea of saying, well, let's try and get some drug trials going for them. And that's something I'm hoping that we'll have at the end of this year um, so that we can actually offer pretty much everyone with Parkinson's some uh, attempt at slowing the course of their disease. And, and really, that's what I'd like us to be able to do. I mean, it's a terrifically te uh, exciting opportunity. And I think the Link Clinical Trials uh, presentation will be very interesting for everybody. So the title of your presentation is, Is the Cure for Parkinson's a Four-Letter Word? So without giving too much away, um, we look forward to uh, seeing you at the summit in your presentation. And uh, I just wanted to say thank you so much for your time in joining us today. That's been my pleasure. And I look forward to uh, getting the feedback from everybody who's uh, watching these things and, uh, and wants to get involved in research. Fantastic. Well, thank you so much to Professor Simon Lewis for today. Thank you.